What is up guys, Dan from playbook.gg and in today's video we're going to go over episode 3 of the spread series looking at the play spread flex mesh. Before we dive into this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the great tutorials that we've got headed your way here on the playbook.gg YouTube channel. Okay guys, welcome back to episode three of the spread series here on the Playbook GG YouTube channel. If you guys are enjoying this series, please make sure to drop a like and make sure that you guys did subscribe to the channel. This is something that we're breaking down absolutely free here on the YouTube channel. For those that are new to the spread series, this is a series dedicated to looking at the spread playbook and trying to keep Madden fresh. Uh, we know that obviously Madden can be a little bit frustrating as the cards get better in Ultimate Team and you know it starts to feel a little bit hopeless as you know the Blitz 8 meta gets rampant and we're going to try to go through this playbook which is a very daunting playbook. It's filled with a lot of great things and also a lot of things that look great but aren't and we're going to try to tell you what to run and what you can throw out. In today's video we're going to break down the play mesh out of the gun spread flex and this is going to mesh very very well pun intended with the plays that we broke down the last few days, namely the RPO read screen and also the play Y stick. We're gonna show you why these three plays together mesh so well as a mini scheme. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, what you want on this play is you want a big body receiver on the outside, preferably some speed too, but uh, if you can't have everything big body for this particular play, on the backside of this play, you want a burner. And we'll explain why here towards the tail end of the video. But we're gonna be dedicating this video to this player in particular, the player that is outside on the running back side. So let's go ahead and quit wasting your time, get into the tip. Now, mesh. This play mesh is very, very good because of the corner route, one of the most unique corner routes in Madden 20. This is basically, if I were to motion this to the inside and you imagine this is maybe like a bunch formation with another receiver bunched up with Boyle and Boykin. This is the same route that so many players like to motion outside in the play gun bunch stick that's the same exact corner so you imagine this motion they do this motion all the time they snap it and then they throw it down and outside and then they toe tap on the sideline and you basically have to play cover two to stop it right so it's pretty much the same deal when you're using it when it's already on the outside however if you do want better results motion it in and then if you're patient enough motion it back out let that guy drop off a few extra yards and then throw that ball to the sideline underneath and toe tap it um, even acrobats won't be able to make that stop on that motion snap now let's go ahead and show it to you just from a standpoint of it's just lined up on the outside. You're not using any motion. You're running the play, say, like you're running it stock. You're going to be able to make this throw. I mean, just throw it down and outside. Hopefully you get an accurate throw. Lamar dice rolled inaccurate on that one. But you see that the throw is there underneath and outside of the outside quarter or outside third. Um, you're going to be able to take this all day long if they are playing any type of uh, off coverage in their zone and it's an outside deep third or fourth you can throw this all day long i'm not kidding it doesn't matter if they shade uh their linebackers into cloud flats you see here in this example i'll play cover four with cloud flats you're gonna see that that linebacker is not gonna be able to make a play here you're just gonna go after throw it boom down outside cloud flat does nothing to stop that so what they end up having to do is they have to go into kind of press to stop this first let me go ahead and show you cover three off coverage here it's gonna be same same deal you're just gonna go ahead and throw that ball it's easy i mean they're they're not gonna play it so Go ahead and throw that ball as much as you want here. Um, you take a look at this route. You can also smart route it. And when you smart route it, it goes up to 10 yards. There is a difference though. So notice how when you smart route it up to 10 yards, you start to get that DB involved. That's because it's deep enough that he can actually break on the throw. He hasn't completely started to backpedal yet, but he's not so far away from the route that, uh, you know, you can possession catch underneath him. You still see it is there. My recommendation here is if you're going to smart route it very frequently is Go make sure that you have like a, a post flag elite on this so you can actually get the possession catches. You see how you get hit sometimes? That can cause catch and traffic drops for you whenever you get hit during the catch animation. It's just how the dice roll in the game. So something to be careful. But again, you see if you do smart route it, there is pretty consistent uh, results on it. You don't really need high medium route running to make this work. Uh, this is just a route that you can kind of realize is gonna be open. My recommendation is do not pass lead it up. You see right there that the acrobat tried to dive. You still get nice possession catches. Kind of why I was saying that you want kind of a bigger body receiver to box out those diving animations. Uh, zoned out is something I would be afraid of. You see right there, again, when you smart route, sometimes you get sucked into two-man interactions. You're going to want good medium throwing accuracy as well on this throw. Here's an example of an in-the-zone player. Uh, again, we're going to go ahead and throw that down and outside. That acrobat doesn't do anything if you possession catch in front of him. So you can smart route it up as much as possible. Um, just make sure you have a bigger frame player to, to take that throw uh, away from an acrobat or a zoned out defender. So again, right here, here's an outside third. If you aggressive catch it, you're going to get dice rolled. 
So do not do not smart route it if you do not have a player that does not have like post flag elite or doesn't have really insane catch and traffic and medium route running just because I really feel you're taking too much of a risk right here when you do it that way. Again, though, down to outside pass lead, if you get good ball, ball placement, you could still complete the smart routed version of this route. Now, nobody in their right mind is going to sit there and give you 10, 12 yards every single rip playing off coverage. Eventually, the reality is they're going to start to play press. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got our man in the zone right here. What you're going to do on this is just realize if they're playing any type of press coverage, you have to throw this ball late. Do not throw it on the cut. If you throw this ball on the cut, you're going to be risking, you know, some animations. Now, it's funny that I say that and I complete it, but the reality is that the more press coverage they play on the outside and you try to throw this route open, there will be times where they do, you know, animations where they can actually swat it, pick it off. If you're really late on it, what ends up happening is they actually drop off of it. So if you can trust that you can get your sideline catch, just wait a little bit longer. Wait on it, wait on it, wait on it. Now throw it. You see how it's wide open on the sideline as opposed to, you know, you're risking a diving animation, potentially a guy randomly animating and jumping the route back down the sideline for a pick six. If you can be patient with it, do so because you will be able to make that throw. So again, you see it right here. Just wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, down and outside. Now you've got it. If they have really good click on stick, there is a chance they might be able to pick it. But again, it is there against the press coverage if you are careful. Now let's go ahead and co go into cover three and play that same press coverage. This is where, in my opinion, it gets a little bit weird. Um, you see here, we try to throw it. It feels like he just matches it because outside thirds match corners. That's just the way this game is programmed to play. So when you know that, <laughs> if they're playing a cover three and they're, and they're you know, all, or playing press coverage on the outside, he's basically going to play man to man. And now you're in a situation where you've got that safety rotated down over the tight end. So you're in a spot where now it's kind of rough to, to really get anything open. So you see right here how that guy basically gets matched. Now you're in a spot where everything is pretty much bagged. So press cover three will give this trouble. Uh, we will have some stuff for cover three with episode four of the spread series coming up in uh, tomorrow's video. But press cover three will probably be the best way uh, to defend it, although most people won't trust it. Now, there's one thing that you can do um, if you have a fast tight end and they're playing a cover three. So let's say that they like play, play press cover three and they've still got this, you know, safety and center field rotated to the weak side. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to really show it to you with a slower tight end. But what you can do on this is actually go with something that looks like this. Double, double streaks. Well, so you're going to streak Sneed on the short side of the field, fade your tight end, drag your backside player, and go ahead and smart route up your corner route to really pull that match third down. And there's going to be a window to that tight end. It's just not going to be as evident right here. You see how there's kind of like an outside pass lead window. And if you have a fast enough tight end, you could actually throw that for a one play score against cover three. That is something you can do if the center fielder is rotated to the wrong side of the, the play. There will be players that just run their cover three wrong. Um, so you see right here, like if they do play cover three and you press, you notice how the game's like, okay, I got to get down over here on the strong side of the formation. But there are quite a few players that leave this guy like in center field and sometimes even leave him low in the box on that play. So something to just kind of be aware of. If you catch them doing that and you know they're in cover three, don't be afraid to go to that route combination just because you're going to be able to kind of fit that throw in uh, with an outside pass lead. Uh, to that throw but again you know you want a fast tight end Boyle's really not the fastest guy in the world to get that job done just kind of want, wanted to illustrate that pocket for you now let's go to the other way that players will try to stop this this is going to be cover two uh cover two is a way that a lot of players will will try to to you know counter this uh it's worth mentioning here that a Landon Roberts on this play he's the player that's responsible for the mid read zone you think that he on, would on this play get back to the middle of the field against the post route but because it's a double move post, what you're going to notice is that he actually doesn't. He's just going to kind of cover air. So I just kind of want to illustrate that to you. Notice how he's going to jump to the left. And then he's like, nope, I'm good. This is going to give you this throw. Just give a little down pass lead. Actually, that was a terrible pass lead by Lamar right there. Uh, it said accurate, but it really wasn't. You want to throw kind of like a little down and inside bullet lead over the middle if you catch them in cover two. Just because that's going to allow you to really um, stress cover two when a lot of players will let that bid read zone just do what it wants. And that's going to allow you to kind of hit that throw. So notice how he gives up on it. And then you're going to go ahead and throw that ball right there in that pocket and try to uh, either lead him between the safeties or just get down in front of the, the safety if you have to get rid of it early. So we'll go ahead and show that to you one more time here. Here's your cover two. Let me go ahead and spy the, spy the rush just a little bit to help show you the seven on seven of it. 
Um, so again, watch how that mid read, he's gonna be like, all right, no, I'm good. And then you're just gonna throw a little down and inside pass lead right there. That's where you wanna make that throw in between the safeties, preferably leading him upfield, but yeah, sometimes you have to lead it down against some of the zoned out players that can really animate it. Safety, safeties are crazy. You guys know there's a lot of really speedy safeties with hit power, good zone coverage. Guys like Sean Taylor, Brian Dawkins, Taylor Mays, Ed Reed, Troy Polamalu, Jamal Adams. There's so many safeties at this point in Mutt that really attacking that third level of the field is, is hard. So uh, this is one of those rare routes that actually does a good job of finding tender spots against deep zones. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and show you one right here. Here's an example of that cover four. Remember how we showed you at the start of the video, we could throw this route against cover four down and outside. There's another throwing lane that you have on this play as well. And that's the first cut of your post corner route. So uh, if you actually throw against cover four, you could be like, boop, throw that ball right there and possession catch on the sideline. So you could throw the post corner route or the, I'm sorry, the corner post route on the first cut as well against certain coverages. So again, just on that first cut, boom, little possession catch on the sideline, get yourself out of bounds. This is a nice way to kind of trickle your way up the field because again, most players are going to play some sort of, you know, press out of their quarters. And then they're going to, you know, make sure that they're not misaligned. Uh, you know, they're going to line up their corners like so. Uh, and if you, if you got enough speed to kill on the outside, you're going to be able to throw, boom, that little possession catch and just kind of catch it underneath of them. It's something that you could do until they start to play, you know, hard flats or, or cloud flats. And once you realize that, that's when you're going to have to be, be able to recognize. So, you know, if you catch your opponents doing some tricky stuff within their cover four where they're doing stuff like this, that's where you have to have the wherewithal to realize, okay, they're really overextending their coverage. Something is not right here. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't appear, it doesn't appear normal. And that's where you decide to, you know, take, take some chances where you're like, okay, well, McCourty didn't seem like he did what I was expecting him to do against the cover, four, you know, the cover four, like the guy played a different assignment, but the post play screen said he was in cover four. Maybe I go ahead and take a shot right here. So then you go ahead and load up on, you know, he's just going to continue running into that guy. But um, that was inorganic uh, bump right there. But, you know, if you catch them really like sitting on that sideline throw on both sides of the field and it's telling you cover four, don't be afraid to load up a, a four verticals kill shot on that that next play because there are a lot of players that will kind of over adjust their cover four or you know go right back to the play why stick um and and really you know don't be afraid to attack the sidelines on that because you know if you catch them in why stick you're gonna be able to throw that ball and again lamar is just making inaccurate throws all over the place here in this video but um you're gonna be able to take those shots on this play so I really find this play mesh out of the gun uh, spread flex to be one of those plays that a lot of players won't be prepared to defend just because of the routes that are on the play. You know, you got the double move corner route to the outside on the short side. You've got the regular corner route to the outside on the wide side, which is a rarity. You know, corner routes to an outside receiver are, are not something that is very frequent in this game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, tomorrow we're going to come back with a cover three beater for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we'll see you guys in tomorrow's edition of Spread Series, episode four. If you like this video, check out one of the videos on your screen right now. And for more in-depth analysis, visit www.playbook.gg for detailed game plans written by pro Madden players. Master the game with playbook.gg.